So the Eastern Neighborhoods Plan is an effort to change the rules and update the rules for development in four neighborhoods, which are the Mission, Showplace Square, Potrero Hill, the Central Waterfront, and the eastern part of South of Market. And it is an effort to look at what should happen in the future in those neighborhoods, which happen to be where a lot of the industrial activities of the city have occurred in the past. The decision is already made to take Mission Bay out of that kind of a use. And so we assumed that was gone and looked at what we had left. Basically looking at the central waterfront on both sides of 3rd Street, just south of Mission Bay. So between 16th Street and Cesar Chavez Street, there's a cluster of remaining production, distribution, and repair activities. That's one. Uh, one of the more interesting ones is what we call the Northeast Mission, which is basically between Potrero Avenue and about South Van Ness and north up to Division and south down to about 20th. Very interesting, very mixed neighborhood with a lot of interesting things going on. And thirdly, I would point to what we call Showplace Square, which might not be a name that a lot of people are familiar with, but is basically the flats at the base of Potrero Hill to the north of Potrero Hill, where all of those big, beautiful brick buildings that have design-related businesses in them are. So those are really the three clusters that we look at. The fourth one, and the biggest one, is in Bayview Hunters Point, which is part of a separate process. We have recommended to transition about half of the industrial land in those four neighborhoods out of industrial and into housing use. The Eastern Neighborhoods Plan actually is a, a very finely wrought compromise between the city's need for housing and affordable housing in particular and the imperative to keep some of these larger, rougher types of businesses able to survive in the city. From catering kitchens to muni bus parking yards to auto repair, furniture wholesaling to, you know, a lot of things that need larger, cheaper spaces to occur and which we feel support the city's overall economy. Those businesses do two things that we need. One, they provide support for the city's front office economy, if you will. The front office economy is the downtown offices, the tourist industry, what we call the knowledge industry. All of those types of businesses need support from things like linen washing for hotels and printing and what have you. So the idea is you need to support our economy by keeping some of that in the city. And secondly, the jobs provided by these businesses are very good, stable jobs. Some activities that used to be clearly an industrial type of activity because of technology changes take place in really a space that pretty much looks like an office. So an example, best example of that is printing and things like printing used to take place and some of it still does in big industrial looking spaces with big machines and all that. Now a lot of printing and graphic work is done at a computer sitting at a desk uh, in space that looks no different than a law office or an accountant's office and we struggle with one of the most difficult issues in terms of how to define those activities because we're forced to define them as offices because that's essentially what they are now yet clearly those are things that should be allowed to go on so we've figured out how to parse those out in the zoning and in some areas we've been more permissive toward them and in other areas we've really said no we want real true industrial businesses to be here into the future we need to preserve a certain amount of production distribution and repair activities or industrial activities or arts related activities we need to do something proactively to, to change the rules to protect these activities. Otherwise, the market left to its own devices will probably push most of it out of the city over time. For some people, the biggest issue after how much industrial land to retain is what should the rules be around affordable housing for the areas that we're turning over to housing. And we have, um, I can simplify a very complicated proposal which basically looks at the areas that were formerly zoned industrial. About half of those are proposed in this plan that's gone through the Planning Commission to be turned over to housing and to where housing would be permitted. And in those areas, we're asking for a higher percentage of affordable housing. Commissioners, my name is Toby. It's been probably the most extensive public process that any of us can remember around any planning issue in San Francisco. We estimate that we've had close to 50 public hearings at the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors. Um, we've had dozens and dozens of public meetings. 
Um, we've had hundreds if not thousands of people involved, neighborhood groups. We may never have consensus. This is San Francisco and you know we will always have different sides of the issue. We believe we have a very solid compromise proposal that gives everybody some of what they want and nobody all of what they want. We'll see a bit of a surge in 2009 and 2010 and what you'll see mostly are uh, what we call multifamily developments. You'll see condo projects and rental projects uh, in buildings anywhere from three or four to 50 or 100 or in some cases three or 400 units each. There's about 4,000 units in the pipeline. We'll see overall between 7,500 and 10,000 new housing units, some new office space development, and a lot of industrial uses that are maintained as well as a lot of industrial businesses that go by the wayside. The best place to go to see how um, the proposed zoning and other rules are changing is to our website, which is easternneighborhoods.sfplanning.org. It's just basically color-coded by proposed zoning, and if you want to get into it in more detail, you can look through the documentation. If you know the general area that you're concerned with, you can look at the map and you can kind of zoom in and look at the streets and find out. And there are a series of detailed maps that show exactly what the proposal is on any given piece of land.